<clears throat> Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to the Audio Analyst. Pardon me. Before we get into today's topic, I want to thank all my current subscribers and remind all new viewers that if you find merit or value in these conversations, if you are enjoying the information I'm sharing here, please subscribe, like, and share links to your favorite episodes with your friends. And please be sure to leave your comments and questions for me to answer. Now, should you wish to support my efforts here, and in the process, receive exclusive access and content, I would ask you to consider becoming a patron using any of the options provided in the comments section below any of my videos. With a wide range of Patreon subscription levels to meet any budget or level of generosity, I'd like to welcome my newest associate patron supporter, John Hoagie. Thank you, John. If a one-time donation makes more sense for you, Please take advantage of that option using Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. I've included links for all three in the comments sections of all my videos. I want you to know that your support at any level ensures that I will be able to continue producing these videos, and it is truly appreciated. You've no idea. Now, Today's discussion will include some simple, no-cost tips and strategies that will allow you to get the best performance from your system, regardless of how expensive or affordable it may be. These ideas will allow you to maximize the native performance of your system, any system, from the simplest, most affordable, to the most exotic and expensive. First, let's discuss some simple things you can do to diminish the deleterious effects of the power feeding your music system. We, we have to acknowledge that dirty, spiky, fluctuating power can rob your music system of its resolving ability, refinement, and clarity. Now, I, I've talked about this concept before in Episode 9 when discussing my sixth audio axiom, um, piss poor power prevents proper performance. Sorry. But I, I wonder, have you ever noticed that your system sounded utterly magical that one time you played that special recording rather late one evening, just before going to bed? If you did, and then chose to ignore it, you're missing out on a good thing. So less than pristine power will be responsible for significant and irretrievable losses to resolution and transparency and can have a large impact on pace, drive, and tonal accuracy. Some people opt to use power conditioners. I, I do. You have to be very select if you choose to use an AC power conditioner, as many have the ability to introduce their own problems. Things like constricted dynamics, the loss of air and space, and, and tonal imbalances. The very best ones, like the Audience Adept Response Passive Units, or the PS Audio Direct Stream Power Plant Regenerators, are magical and present no deleterious side effects in my experience. However, they are costly. And not everyone wants to or can afford to take that leap. So how can we leverage the best power delivery to our music systems without spending a bundle? Well, the easiest way comes from understanding that any running electronic device on your home electrical system will contribute to the degradation of the quality and purity of the AC feeding your sources, line stage, and amplifiers by injecting noise and disrupting stability. Now, by far, the worst offenders are digital devices and anything with a motor or a heating element. So, your first move will be to turn off 
any devices you don't need to have running while listening to music. This will include things like your computers, desktops and laptops, monitors, printers, scanners, digital picture frames, unnecessary lights, especially fluorescents or those using dimmers, televisions, streaming devices. Um, don't forget things like Wi-Fi routers and, and wireless bridges. If they're not necessary, turn them off. And, and especially heavy appliances, devices like fans, humidifiers or dehumidifiers, dishwashers, clothes washers and dryers, sump pumps, and furnaces or air conditioners. Stifling your air conditioning or furnace can bring further sonic benefits by alleviating the additional acoustic polluting mechanical noises of their blowers and air handlers. Further, actually unplugging all those wall wart AC charging devices for your phones, tablets, and other rechargeable devices, including any that are used to power the devices listed above, will prove a sonic benefit. Many devices today, like monitors or printers, use these type power supplies. When plugged in, even when nothing is connected to the receiving end, besides dissipating and wasting power with no benefit, their coils and transformers are generating spurious noise and electromagnetic interference, which they can introduce to your AC lines. Eliminating these devices from your home AC network eradicates all the noise and hash uh, they spawn and inject back into it, contributing significantly to enhanced resolution, pitch definition, and speed, quieter backgrounds, better shading of microdynamic events, more focused and stable imaging and sound staging, more accurate and truthful timbre, uh, and better fleshed out textured harmonics. I've even noted meaningful improvement to critical LP listening sessions by unplugging my music server and DAX. It's up to you. It makes a difference though. The next thing on our list that you can do is to check with your local electric utility company to learn what the peak usage times are for your area, and then schedule your most crucial listening during off-peak times. <clears throat> now, peak usage refers to the times when uh, excessive residential and industrial demands are made on the power consumption. Now, the surge is required to overcome inertia and start an induction motor turning, create uneven current demands, and present a, a backflush of electromotive force from that motor's primary coil to the power network. These irregularities create instability and introduce hash, spikes, and otherwise undesirable grunge and disruptions to the power your equipment uses. Most areas consider from about noon to 6 p.m. to be peak usage during the week. But if you live in a densely populated uh, development, or maybe even in an apartment complex, you may want to take into account that your neighbors will be watching television, running their dishwashers, clothes washers, and dryers, even using their mobile devices, spewing loads of RFI and EMI uh, until mid to late evening. And while weekends are typically considered off-peak, if you live near an industrial park or a factory complex, your off-peak usage times may vary. And honestly, both peak and off-peak usage times can vary widely from season to season, in large part because people don't typically run their air conditioner or furnace as often in the spring and fall as they do in summer and winter. So, a visit to your utility company's website or a call to their customer service line will arm you with some useful information that will assure you better listening with typical improvements much along the lines of those noted with turning off and unplugging your unused electronics. Finally, after leveraging all these other electrical optimizations, if you are not in a position to consistently leave your gear powered on, plan your listening and turn all your gear on at least one hour before you plan to do any critical listening. All electronics, from amps to preamplifiers to source equipment, sound their best 
after they have reached their optimum operating temperature and achieved thermal stability. Output devices, be they semiconductors or tubes, are constantly changing operating characteristics as they warm up and finally stabilize. Because thermal equilibrium is dependent on the heat sink area and other solid mass used to dissipate the heat generated by the output devices, the larger that mass is, the longer it will take to reach stability. Because the current in the circuit is consistently fluctuating until the bias settles, the sound may be all over the map until it does. Once that stasis is achieved, the sonic results are consistently as good as they can be from that device, which are typically expressed as purer timbre, richer harmonics, and more stable images. These effects are usually achieved within about an hour, but listen for yourself and make your own assessments. Next up, one of the most harmful things to your audio signal as it courses through its conductor between your source component and preamplifier or your amplifier on the speakers is the disturbing interference offered by some unpredictable dielectric interaction or an imposed field effect. Yet this kind of de uh, degradation can be easily and effectively managed. Significant and rewarding sonic improvements may be found by paying attention to what is known as cable dressing. Simply put, cable dressing is how we choose to arrange, place, and route all our components' cables. With interconnects, one of the most musically damaging things you can do is to have a power cord running side by side in parallel with a cable carrying the delicate line level signal from a source component or a preamplifier. This can be effectively addressed by separating your line level cords from your component power cables. For example, you may be able to group all your power cords to the right rear of your equipment stand and all your signal cables to the left. This will have the effect of keeping the much stronger radiated fields around your 120 volt AC cables from inducing any noise or creating an electrical impedance problem for the more delicate signals coursing through your interconnects. Now, this ideal left-right separation isn't always feasible given the fact that all components don't have their power cords situated on the same location on their back panel. But in such cases, the next best results are obtained by having any cables that must come near to or into contact with each other cross each other's path at a 90 degree angle rather than parallel. This provides a minimum area of interaction between the two cables, drastically minimizing their field effects upon each other. The sonic benefits derived by separating line level and AC cables typically include increased definition, better imaging and staging, enhanced low level detail and resolution, and a more coherent signal from top to bottom. One of the more audible and annoying problems with loudspeaker cables is one caused by the deleterious dielectric interaction with your floor covering. Most thick carpets are made of materials that, while designed to wear for 20 years and not absorb pizza sauce, have extremely poor electrical characteristics. And honestly, even bare wooden floors are considerably less than desirable. Because your cable lays on this material, half of the cylindrical field generated around the cable as it courses to your loudspeaker is impeded by the flooring, often creating a gross slurring of the signal. Any time an alternating current, the audio signal from your amplifier to your speakers, is being conducted through the wire, it creates a magnetic field around and extending away from the wire in a varying cylindrical field. And every time that signal alternates, the magnetic field of the signal collapses, then re-expands as it reverses. As such, any additional amount, and especially any asymmetrical additional amount of dielectric materials that the signal encounters, 
such as that presented by the carpet or the flooring the cable lies on, affects the rate, completeness, and uniformity of that expanding and collapsing signal. The materials under the cable impede that rapidly changing magnetic field, affecting its rate of change, presenting completely different degrees of reactance to the half of the field extending below the cable than to the half extending above it into only air. The result of this effect can be heard as smearing of fine detail, lumpy tonality or timbral imbalances, brightening or dulling of the bandwidth, corrupted timing, and obliterated detail. The point is, you need to get your loudspeaker cables up off the floor. Now, some people in my experience uh, go to serious extremes in this area because of the significance of the interaction. In the spring of 1997, I spent several days visiting Pierre Spray, the brilliant recording engineer and founder of Maple Shade Productions, while doing a story on him for positive feedback. Over my time there, besides getting to spend a couple of hours over a meal and drinks, chatting with the late Jimmy Cobb, the world-renowned drummer who lent his timekeeping talents to the likes of Miles Davis and many other jazz legends, I learned that Pierre used monofilament wire, fishing line, suspended from his ceiling <laughs> to hold the wires off the floor, uh, effectively building a, a loudspeaker cable suspension bridge between the amps and speakers in his room. This might be a bit much for the average listener, and it is sure to upset the significant other, but it was highly effective. But since paper offers moderately good dielectric interaction and is so inexpensive, one of the easiest fixes is to use paper cups under the speaker wires to elevate them off your carpet or floor. You might even try empty cardboard toilet paper rolls uh, or paper towel rolls. Just lying them on their sides is not terribly effective as that doesn't afford any significant elevation and in that position they can flatten and crush easily over time. Rather, cut them into at least four inch lengths and stand them on end so that they stand up. Um, you can even cut some half round or V-type notches into one end of the uh, uh, tube so that it prevents the cables from sliding off so readily. It makes a big difference, guys. It really can. So there you have it. A bunch of suggestions that cost nothing but your time and will help with the recovery of coherence, microdynamics, resolution, transparency, fine detail, and tonal accuracy. And all of them are as equally effective with a $2,000 system as they are with a $500,000 one. Guys, let me know what you hear when you experiment with any or all of them. With that, I'd like to offer my sincere thanks for uh, taking the time to drop by and visit today. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone to subscribe and to like and share your favorite episodes, as, as well as to post your comments and questions for me. Guys, please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers. <laughs>